Welcome back. In this video, we are going to take a look at applying Laplace transforms to second order differential equations. And uh, the process is going to be very much the same. We do need to develop some new formulas for doing this, but we should probably point, point out that not all differential equations are going to be effectively solvable with, uh, sec with Laplace transforms. And in particular, we have to remember that finding, for example, the Laplace of a product of two things can only be done when one of those is a constant. So remember, y is a function of time. The Laplace function operates uh, as an integral. And so because you're going to be integrating a constant times a function, you could factor the constant out. Again, as long as c is constant. But that is not going to be the case whenever the function that is we're taking the Laplace of involves the product of two functions, the Laplace of a function of t times y. Remember, y is a function of t itself. You can't factor that function out because the Laplace transform is an integral by definition, and uh, you cannot factor out functions of t since you're integrating with respect to t. And similarly, you can't write the Laplace of a product of two things as the Laplace of one times the Laplace of the other. And the reason that doesn't work is because this is integration. And when you integrate a product of two things, you have to use things like integration by parts. So unfortunately, that won't work either. With that said, to illustrate when we should, when we can use Laplace transforms for this, this will only work on second order ODEs that have constant coefficients on all terms involving y. Uh, so y, dy, dt, the second derivative of y with respect to t. That is, we can only solve equations of the form a times second derivative plus b times the first derivative plus c times y equals zero. Or more succinctly, we could write it as a times y double prime plus b times y prime plus c y equals zero, assuming a, b, c are all constants. If any one of these coefficients is not constant, the tools that we've developed so far for Laplace transforms unfortunately won't work. There is something called the method of convolution. Uh, we won't get into that in this video, but there is a way to deal with products whenever uh, you're trying. It gets a little complicated though. So we recall from our Laplace transform table, some of these we've seen before. Uh, this time around, we're going to focus specifically on using the, uh, introducing the sine, the cosine, and the exponentially, uh, the exponential amplitude of exponentially changing amplitude of sine and cosine. Those are some of the more common ones that we'll use. So let's look at the structure of these for a second. So whenever you have uh, here, by the way, a any anything that doesn't involve s is assumed to be a constant. So if you are taking the Laplace of sine of some numerical uh, value times t, it's going to equal that numerical value divided by s squared plus that numerical value squared. Cosine looks very similar. In fact, if you look at them really quickly, you might not be able to tell the difference, but this one has an s in the numerator. This one has a constant in the numerator. And even though s it's itself is a constant, when we are dealing with inverting it, we're treating it as if it were a variable. The exponentially changing sine and cosine are very similar. You'll see that here they've relabeled the, uh, instead of it being sine of at, it's sine of bt. You have e to some constant t times sine of some other constant times t. And so whatever that argument is of the sine function, that's what's going to go in the numerator and the square of it in the denominator. And then you've got to be able to write s minus the value of a quantity squared. Very similar concept for uh, exponentially changing cosine, but you'll notice that this component, the s minus a squared, that s minus a appears in the numerator as well. So we'll take a look at how we apply these in just a moment, but those are the new ones that we'll introduce. Uh, we also will need the Laplace of the second derivative, and I don't really like the way this table lists it, so I would say that for number 36 to rewrite it, and we've done this in a previous video, uh, if you are trying to take the Laplace transform of the second derivative, which is the same thing as writing the uh, Laplace of the second derivative as in, in the Leibniz form, is going to be s squared times the Laplace of y minus 
S times the initial condition minus the initial condition for the first derivative. So in the context of spring mass systems, this could be the initial position of the mass and this could be the initial velocity. So actually I'll go ahead and write that here. So this is initial position and this here is the initial velocity. So again, the, the beauty of working with Laplace transforms is you don't have to later solve for your arbitrary constants. You can solve for them. Um, actually, you just get to plug them right into the formula. And then when you're done doing the five-step process of solving differential equations with Laplace transforms, you're done. That's it. So let's practice a little bit with these new e equations that we have here. Uh, find the following, the Laplace transform of 3 times sine of 2t. Okay, so first of all, same principles apply as before, except now we're dealing with the sine function, which we have not yet dealt with. But uh, the 3 can be factored out. So this is equal to 3 times the Laplace transform of sine of 2t. And again, the reason we can do that is because it's a constant. It's not, 3 is not a function of time. And okay, so now I have to look at the sine rule. And the Laplace transform of sine of at is a over s squared plus a squared. So for us, and this is formula number seven, so from number seven, we can write that the Laplace transform of sine of 2t is going to be three times, okay, Laplace of that is going to be the value of a. So here a is two. And so that's going to be a over s squared plus a squared. So 3 over 2, 3 times 2 over s squared plus 4. I usually like to leave it as 2 squared because inevitably when we're solving equations, we're going to take an inverse. And when you take an inverse, uh, you're going to want to make sure that here you have a and here you have a squared. So it's better to just keep the bases 2 and 2 here written as 2's instead of having this s squared plus 4 so that later you don't have to rewrite it as s squared plus 2 squared. Just a little um, handy time-saving tip. For letter B, we're going to do the same thing, but this one's going to be negative cosine of 2t. So for B, the Laplace transform of negative cosine of 2t. So the negative is a negative 1, so I can factor out that negative 1, Laplace of cosine of 2t. And this one is going to be s over s squared plus a squared. So very close to the number 7, but number 8 just says s over s squared plus a squared. So our a value is the argument for cosine, and that value is 2. So this is going to evaluate to negative 1 times s over s squared plus 2 squared. And again, that value of 2 is my argument here, which is here. For letter C, uh, this is an exponentially decaying sine function. So remember what this looks like is this is going to have an exponentially decaying amplitude. And we know that these are valuable when we're dealing with spring mass systems. So to take the Laplace transform of e to the negative 2t times sine of 4t, we have to look at the exponentially decaying sources, and that's going to be um, number 19. Now, our argument for sine is going to be uh, up here as well as down here. It's going to be b and then b squared. And then whatever our a value is, is going to be s minus a quantity squared there. So to do that, I am going to write uh, that this is, well, so this is my value of a right here. That's my a. This is my b. So my a is negative 2. My b is positive 4. So this is going to be b squared, or sorry, b over the quantity s minus a. Okay, so s minus negative 2, which is really just s plus 2 squared, uh, plus the square of 4. And uh, you can write that again more succinctly as s 4 over s plus 2 squared plus 4 squared. 
For the cosine function, very, very similar, except the numerator will be the same thing as what's inside of here. So this will be s minus a, and this will be s minus a. So since I already know what s minus a is, I can write that letter d will be the Laplace of e to the negative 2t cosine of 4t. And that one will simply be s minus a, so that's going to be s plus 2 in the numerator, over the square of s plus 2 plus the square of the argument of cosine. So that's going to be 4 squared, or 16. And that's our final answer for d. We should also know how to invert these. So how do I work backwards? I know that in letter A here, I'm dealing with a cosine function because cosine has the, the Laplace transform of cosine of AT is going to equal S over S squared plus A squared. So for letter A here, I see that my A squared is 25. So what I want to do is I want to write this as some number squared. And that's pretty easy to do if we think about taking the square root of it and applying the square symbol. The Laplace inverse of s over s squared plus 25. Well, 25 is 5 squared. So if it, if it were something more uh, less of a perfect root, for example, let's say 26. Well, 26 is equal to the square root of 26 squared. So instead of putting in, like here, the square root of 25 is 5, you could just leave this as the square root of 25 squared. Because 25 is equal to the square root of 25 squared. And now I see that uh, my value of a is 5, and I know that this is going to be the structure of a cosine function. So this is going to be the cosine of 5t. For letter b, uh, similar process, but I see a constant in the numerator. And um, let me change this constant real quick. So I'm going to let it be 5 to make this simple. So I, I see that, that this guy here, letter b, the inverse Laplace of 5 over s squared plus 25. Well, remember, if this is a constant, then this, is, this should be the square of the constant in order for this to invert back into sine. Well, it turns out that this number here is the same as this number here. And that is exactly what we need for uh, the sine function. So this is going to be the sine of 5t. Again, the only difference is this is an s, this is a 5. I'm sorry my s's and my 5's kind of look the same, but that's an s and the second one is a 5. For letter C, I see that it has the structure of a, of a um, exponentially changing sine function. So I see a constant up here and I see that s minus something squared here. So that makes me think this is going to relate to number let letter number 19. So in this case, since this number and this number here, one of them is the denominator has the square of the numerator and my a value I can read off from here. So remember this a and this s minus a, they're going to have the opposite signs. So that means that this inverse will have the structure. Let me write this down. So letter C is the Laplace inverse of 10 over S minus 4 quantity squared plus 10 squared. And so I see that my value of A from that formula, I'm sorry, my value of B from that formula is 10. And my value of A is going to be the opposite of negative 4, which is positive 4. And so this will invert into E to the positive 4t times sine of 10t. And so we should notice that the 4 here goes there, and the 10 is the argument for the sine function. Now in letter d, we are going to see one major change, and that is that we notice that the numerator is not the square root of the denominator. And so what we're going to have to do, and we'll do this in the next uh, installment of this video, is we're going to have to make sure that this number is, uh, when you square it, you get this number down here. So the question is, what do we do when we're off in the numerator by a factor? And we'll attack that in the next video.